I think the clinical residency model is a solution to a lot of problems that we have experienced in preparation of teachers. Uh, that is uh, really the wave of the future. For one thing, it makes sure that we identify the very best places where good urban teaching is going on. Uh, like teaching hospitals in medicine, uh, it creates places where people can go and learn the state-of-the-art practice. And then it creates a context within which prospective teachers, new teachers, can come in, learn at the elbow of a great uh, master teacher and a set of master teachers, learn about the whole school context and the whole community context, and at the same time integrate that with the coursework from a partnering university that is deeply ensconced in the quality of the work at the school. I'm Anna Marie Francois, Director of UCLA Center X. In this episode of Impact, Preparing Effective Teachers for Urban Schools, we see how pre-service teachers become effective classroom teachers. Impact apprentices learn and apply content area knowledge, classroom management, lesson planning and delivery, and strategies for building student and parent relationships. During their residency, apprentice teachers work alongside mentor teachers in small, innovative urban schools, building relationships, constructing curriculum, assessing students, and co-teaching for an entire year. The idea behind this residency model is that the students are learning on the job, much like how a master artisan would have learned his or her craft. I think the impact programs really prepared me for being the teacher in that I've had so much more hands-on experience. We're going to taste different food that is made from corn. Where does corn come from? Remember in the book? There's husk on the corn and it's called elote in Spanish. Can everybody say elote? Elote in Spanish corn is elote. An entire year of actual teaching has really prepared me. Like I've been able to see a lot more things have come up and I've been able to deal with them myself and, and had the experience like hands-on. The IMPACT program is unique in that the student teachers or apprentices in our program are matched with mentors in the summer and they begin from day one, this, uh, day one of the school year. So they're in the classrooms with their mentor teachers and throughout the year they also take university courses that inform their practice. IMPACT gives you the opportunity to work in the classroom from day one and get the full experience, the positive and the negatives. You know, you get to feel the, the hardships and the successes as well. Because you also mentioned like to me before, like, because we passed out the tiles before. I know, I can't believe I forgot <laughs> that. Oh. So, like, I didn't realize either, but I think that also kind of yeah. like, then they had it on there instead of just like being able to listen to us. Right. Like you. And so like I said, I know, and I've said that before, <laughs> like, don't put something in front of them that's going to be a distraction. Yes. And I did exactly <laughs> what I said not to do. And then, the coursework that we have is paired up, paired so well with what you can implement in your classroom. This program really um, is trying to support apprentices to connect theory and practice. So they learn the theory in university and then they apply some of these theories in the practice. Uh, the key difference is that the theory is not all uploaded at the front and then the student teaching in the later part, but it's a constant revisitation of theory and practice. The program was, was really great with, with teaching sort of educational theory in the classroom. Um, and one of the things that was really great was an opportunity to take the theories that we learned and figure out how to apply that into the classroom setting. Um, 
I think that's, that's probably for me the, the best thing was taking these theories and learning how to apply them. So they go into the field, they apply the theory, and they come back and they reflect on their practice, and then also then think about how theory will then again inform their practice to better meet the needs of their students. We're going to look a little bit more closely at rigor and relevance and I appreciate that earlier today you, you mentioned that that a lot of the, na the experiences that you've had out of the classroom have kind of gotten you thinking a little bit more of how do we make our instruction more relevant, how do we connect students to the real world um, in experience and instruction and hopefully having you go out into the field yourself and trying to See well, yeah, that was really that was really cool. That nanotech, you know, I, I could see potentially uh, trying something like this with my students, and if not, well, how else can I make it relevant? How else can I connect with my students? In our methods class, we, I guess, we have different methods of how to handle the classroom. Um, what are how do we maintain rigor, right? And um, how do we create a safe environment for our students? and an environment that encourages learning. And in that methods course, um, what I really enjoy about it is that we don't just talk about the methods, we actually apply them. And for me, that's very important because seeing it in action is more than reading about it or talking about it. And um, so when I see it in action, I'm like, oh, I really like how that worked. <laughs>
try to figure out how much fencing she will need for, to surround her whole yard. Once you do that, you can answer part B. Whenever I plan a lesson, I usually start by planning independently and then I bring whatever I have to Amber, my mentor, so that she can look at it and kind of uh, give me some pointers. The big idea is I want them to explore a health need in their community and then come up with an idea or solution for that need. Okay. So um, in terms of crafting the driving question, mm -hmm. what is the one sort of question that could be like the overarching idea for the whole project? So I'm kind of... I'm thinking between how can we create health in our community mm -hmm. and then how can we create solutions to health related problems in our community. I like that. Yeah. And I'm kind of leaning towards the first one because I think that it gives the students more agency of how can they actually create health or change, you know, be be advocates for change in their communities. Okay. So uh, you're having an idea behind student empowerment. Mm -hmm. I, I do like the idea though of, of using the word solution uh -huh. just because they're it, it has the idea that they're asking, being asked a question, they're being asked to answer it, mm -hmm. and then how they get to that point is going to be the scaffolding for the project. Yeah. So that's, that's so it's good. definitely okay. a more specific. Right. My objectives today were for the students to basically pick a topic that they're going to do their project on. So the project is the community health project. So I basically wanted them to pick a topic that they could use for the rest of the project. And I also wanted them to complete a proposal today where they would basically outline to me what it is that they want to do their final project on. Okay, so what, so your, so your main topic is air pollution? Yes. And so your solution is less driving? Yes. Okay. Or bikes. Like trading cars ah. or bicycles. The pro final product should actually address the problem. So I don't want you just to make a poster if, you know, how is the poster going to help? If the poster is going to help and you prove to me, you show me that the poster might actually help the problem, then you can make a poster. But I want to see a proposal. What do you plan to do and why? Why is it going to solve, start to solve the problem? I think today's lesson went. I think the lesson went pretty well. Most of the students seem to be engaged and a lot of them seem to have a lot of good ideas about what to do with the project. Um, I think the Jot Thoughts activity went especially well because they knew how to do the activity so they were able to actually use it to brainstorm ideas. Mm -hmm. And so do you feel like all the kids were able to have a pretty solid idea of what they wanted for the outcome of the project? Yeah, I think as I was going around and talking to different tables, sometimes I would have to help them move to that point. I think some of them were thinking only about the final product, and so some of them were like, what if I make a poster? And I was you know, having to tell them that they need to connect it to the community, and mm -hmm. so how is a poster going to help? Mm -hmm. Is a poster going to connect to the community or not? Today we really wanted the students to have a to get a solid structure for their essays and to make sure that they had um, good supporting evidence in each of their body paragraphs. We wanted to make sure that students really were starting to get a better handle on what is a research paper, how do you write a research paper. Um, if they hadn't really gotten through a lot of the process of it, what is it that they need to now go back and work on? Um, and really, um, help them sort of just with the, the format and the content of their essays. We're going to start taking our research that we've been working on and we're going to start developing our projects. The projects that you guys are developing are going to be do, they're basically, you're going to do a presentation on them next Friday, right? So it's not a whole lot of time. So today we're going to kind of go through and use this worksheet to reflect back on some different parts of the research project, right? And we're going to take some key elements of your research and use this to develop your guys' projects. So what did you think were the struggles that they had with the research paper progress? I felt like the biggest problems they were having were with sort of 
figuring out how to do a research paper because it seemed like a lot of them hadn't done them before. Some of them said specifically that they had never done a research paper before. And when I helped them organize their ideas, like explain what the research paper was for um, and sort of ask them specifically, like, what, what do you want to cover in each of your body paragraphs? That really helped them a lot. So the question, what do you want to cover in each body paragraph? Mm -hmm. Okay, I had success with a really similar question um, and helping the students designate a topic for each body paragraph kind of is what they needed to get them on their way. Throughout the whole year she's been really supportive and in trying to get me in charge of the classroom and to take over responsibility and for for us to really be equals in the classroom. Um, I came in with very little classroom experience so at first I was a little hesitant um, and, and she recognized that and was you know totally willing she's like these are the lessons that we're doing sort of this is the the plan and you know you could be can you be in charge of this lesson sort of you know whatever I was comfortable with and she was really great about being supportive of if I had a question in like how do I present this material to the students or um, once I presented this to the students like I, I'm having trouble like getting them to you know, focus on, on their assignment or, or whatever questions I had. She's always been really helpful about doing little tips, but also hands off enough to the point where it was like, you know, sh it was really on me to, to do something that would be worthwhile for the students. The goal is for our teachers then go into their classrooms and to create their own communities. Communities among students as learners of mathematics, community um, as professionals at their schools. So they collaborate with mentors, they collaborate with peers, they collaborate with other teachers on, at their school site. And we try to really instill that, um, the social cultural perspective that we learn by doing, that we learn in the community. The UCLA Early Childhood Education and Elementary Impact apprentices get the benefit of the collaboration that the impact program has with families and schools and my direct counterpart uh, at families in schools is Deborah Coleman. My role in the impact program and families in schools role in the impact program uh, is actually working with a cohort of 16 students that are working on a elementary school credential as well as an early childhood education credential and I get to co-teach the community engagement class all through the year, which is very exciting to see students really grow and learn about the power of parent and community engagement over the year. Families and Schools really emphasizes the uh, parent relations, community outreach, how we can incorporate that into our classroom, and it really gives us strategies on how to reach out to the parents and have them more involved in their students' education. Through our, our program, our classes, we do a lot of discussions on how to engage with parents and, and what healthy engagement looks like. Recently, we had a group PK come in and lead a two-week workshop with us on what that kind of parent engagement looks like. And we're able to, to draw from that event with what we're doing in our classroom with our parents already, and that really helps us see what the, the fruit of what we're doing really is with the parents. For students who are athletes, like if you know that they're athletes, I mm -hmm. think that um, getting their parents to support them in that like extracurricular, sure. I think it's... I mean, even once, you know, mm -hmm. like for one game, I know I used to coach at Belmont High School, mm -hmm. and for the seniors, we had that parent day, and mm -hmm. I mean, everybody was crying when they saw their parent, it was yeah. like a surprise, you know, yeah. and everybody was like, I can't believe my parent came in, mm -hmm. and this meant so much to me, and yeah. and it goes, it kind of goes with what you're saying, making them feel like they can thrive. There is an adult that is watching them, is witnessing their efforts and being proud of them, you know? Uh, my mentor and I have held workshops throughout the year where we have parents come into our classroom in the afternoon and we do different activities with the parents. Uh, we meet the parents in the beginning of the school year and we're able to build a relationship with them throughout the year. It allows the residents to actually learn about teaching and the use of strategies in our communities and in our schools. So they actually are able to access first-hand experience and we're able to observe them on a daily basis. So that is almost a pre-employment interview process and we can see them grow over time, which helps us project the type of teacher that we may be working with.
My role as uh, the IMPACT faculty advisor is to teach the math methods course at the university as well as to provide field support for them in the field. My faculty advisor, uh, she provides a lot of feedback. Um, we have one-on-one -on -one meetings with our advisor twice a quarter where we go over our goals for the quarter, um, any questions or concerns we are currently dealing with, and she provides immediate feedback for us. I visit them every month or every other month and I visit their classrooms, I meet with their mentors, and I provide both written and oral feedback on their teaching. She observes us teach, she takes notes on our teaching, and she'll debrief with us right afterwards and, and say how we're doing and where we're at and how we can improve our practice. And she's also um, very available for support. If there's ever a question or a concern I have, I can shoot her an email, I can talk to her after class, and she's always there to, to provide support and feedback and help with our practice. As an impact faculty advisor, uh, I focus on supporting our students, our apprentices, through their first year. I also focus on developing their dispositions as teachers, their identity, their confidence. Um, I observe them in the classroom. I work with mentors also to support them. These are, these are our apprentices who are going to soon become teachers. How do we make their experience a supportive one where they grow and feel more confident in, in themselves? One of the benefits of being in the IMPACT program, something I really liked about it in the description and how it's working out is that my math cohort is 16 of us and I love the fact that it's um, a very small group uh, because we really get to focus and um, I guess really you have the support from a lot of people. And I think um, in order to become better educators, I think that's important. And I feel like if it was a bigger group or even if it was not focused in the social justice, I, I'd, I feel like I would have a harder connection trying to uh, become an educator. The cohort model provides ongoing opportunities for relationship building, regular spaces for critical dialogue and inquiry, and academic and personal support. As a faculty advisor, I really try to create a community of learners in my cohort. So our program is very unique in that there are 15 apprentices and we stay together throughout the program. So one of my role is in seminar or in methods course to create a community of teacher professionals where they learn from each other. The main benefit of being in a cohort of mathematics teachers at UCLA has to be the community aspect. We're all a community learning to become teachers. We're a community going through the same process to become a teacher. So being able to sit down with that community and reflect and share ideas and bounce things off each other really helps us all grow together as teachers. I think that during the program, while they are with us in the 18-month residency, that they are exposed to the realities of teaching that you can't get at a university. And so as teachers are in classrooms making instructional decisions, as they are dealing with conflict in the classroom, as they are trying to figure out how do I differentiate this particular content for this particular child, in, that mo in those moments, that's where the true learning about what it means to be a teacher happens. I think that what the, teacher, the student teachers learn from coming here to last one year before they start teaching is the experience of seeing how students react. Because, I mean, you can learn in college like to teach this this way and that way, but you're not, they're not going to teach you how a student is going to react, how sometimes it's very difficult for a student to understand something, so they have to see it with their own eyes. I think it's really important to have um, teachers go with a teacher who's already taught a class for a long period of time, you get me? So it's very important for student teachers to see when, when I become a teacher, students are going to react this way and I have to make sure I do this and that and that. A lot of uh, the work that we do in our program is field work, so we spend the most of our time teaching in the field as opposed to being in the class learning. We are looking at these by comparing them to see which was greater and we found out that mat A was negative one and mat B was zero. This is an inequality, they're not equal. We can say that mat A is less than mat B. So that's one example of an inequality. So on your paper, make sure we have our vocabulary word inequality written down. 
And through that process, we're able to learn hands-on by doing, as opposed to, to learning all about theory and then trying to apply. We're actually able to connect theory and fieldwork at the same time. Midway through the second semester, I actually got to design my own project and, and have the students work on this project as, as the unit. And so I was in control of the whole class for about two months. Right now, you're going to be developing a project, right? It's going to be based on the research that you've been doing. So let's say, for example, that your research project was you, wanted, you were looking at how soda affects young kids, right? How does it affect the health of young students, right? You could take this, and your project might be, I'm going to go to a middle school, and I'm going to present, I'm going to do a presentation to the middle school about how drinking soda affects your health. And the goal of your project is to get students to not drink so much soda, right? So then on Friday next week, you're going to come in and present, this is what I did this week. I went to a middle school. I gave them a presentation. And that, for me, was a really great way to, to take all of the, the pedagogy and the theory that I learned about at school and take the sort of the, the learning about project-based learning that I learned in the classroom and sort of really you know, embody them in my own teaching and got a chance to develop my own project and, and present it to the students. And you know, there's a lot you can learn from, from a classroom and there's a lot you can learn from observing a mentor, but then actually you know, getting a chance to develop your own project, doing it yourself, it's, it's, a, it's a different experience. And I think that was probably the biggest learning experience I've had. The advantage of being in the IMPACT program is the fact that you do have hands-on experience from day one of the program. I know a lot of other programs, you spend the first half of the year in the classroom learning about how to teach and then you teach in the other half, but with IMPACT you start teaching from day one. And through that you're able to make mistakes, um, get, get the real sense of being a teacher and what it's like. And then you, through reflection and one-on-one and -on -one with your mentor and your advisor, you're able to hone, hone in on your craft and, and perfect what you're doing in the classroom. Having pre-service teachers work in classrooms with accomplished mentor teachers not only allows them to learn hands-on, but also provides an authentic understanding of the communities they serve. I'm Anna Marie Francois. Next time on IMPACT, we explore what it means to be an accomplished mentor teacher who leads by example.